Thank you, Michelle. A very good afternoon to everyone. It's my pleasure to welcome all the participants on this call, as well as the management of Hindustan Petroleum Corporation Limited. The management is led by Mr. Pushkumar Joshi, CMB, Mr. Rajneesh Narang, Director of Finance, Mr. S. Bharatan, Director of Refineries, and Mr. K. Vinod, ED, Corporate Finance. I would request the manager to give a briefing, and then we can move on to QMP. The floor is open to you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Vardha. A very good afternoon to all those uh, friends who have joined. And uh, it's always a, a pleasure for us to interact on these forums, and especially after such significant uh, events. Because I recall uh, we had interacted with you in October after our H1. We had interacted with you after uh, Q3. And uh, the central theme which we had uh, enunciated at that time was that our concentration is on improving and stabilizing our fundamentals. So uh, I'm very happy to share with you that we had a very conclusive uh, you know, turnaround in Q4 where we had an increase of 437% vis-a-vis uh, uh, the Q3. And uh, if we look at our yearly performance, we have ended the year with a consolidated profit of 16,015 crores versus a loss of 6,980 crores. Now, this is a very significant thing. And uh, what we had indicated that our efforts to provide stability to our balance sheet in terms of enhancing our core assets, that is refinery, both in terms of capacity and the quality of assets, I am very happy to share with you that we have been able to successfully commission our YZ refinery modernization product, uh, project and it has started giving us uh, the uh, dividends, it has started giving us the results. Similarly, during next uh, 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 next uh, period, maybe you know, another three, four months, we would also be commissioning our bottom upgradation uh, facility, which would not only add to our margin, but also add again in terms of capacity of our uh, refinery processing. Similarly, uh, marketing infrastructure, we have made significant strides in developing marketing infrastructure, and the outcome of that is that amongst the public sector uh, companies, majors which are operating, we are the company which has gained market share in both uh, MS, HSD, and also we have retained our position as the second largest LPG uh, player in the uh, country. Similarly, uh, if again, the same point which I had stressed earlier, but look at, look at us as our fundamentals. Now, another outcome of our uh, improving refinery performance is that our fuel loss performance in this year is significantly better. And in fact, our fuel loss percentage has come down vis a vis the last year. Uh, we have been uh, utilizing the opportunity pool which is available, and we are harnessing the maximum potential available there. We had also mentioned that in terms of providing new revenue streams to our uh, uh, balance sheet, we had concentrated on three primary areas. One was petrochemicals, second was biofuels and renewables, and third was natural gas. In all these three areas, we have made significant strides, and in our next five-year plan, which we have already drawn up, uh, that is from 26 to 31, a significant portion of our revenue we expect to come from this, additional revenue to come from this. For example, in petrochemical, we have already established our brand in the market. And uh, in case of city gas distribution, we are present now in 25 geographies across the country in 18 states. In biofuels and renewables, I will come to that detail shortly. Uh, that our new company, that is uh, HPCL Renewable and Green Energy Limited, that is fully operational now. And we 
uh, if you recall, we had uh, made a wholly owned subsidiary, and that subsidiary is operational. It is uh, doing solar power right now, and we have very ambitious plans going forward to leverage on this aspect of biofuels and renewables. Second aspect, which was always, uh, you know, was the back of everybody's mind, was our investment in Rajasthan refinery, HRRL. I'm very happy to share with you that uh, we have already started the commissioning process of certain units, and uh, in the, uh, you know, detailed press release which we have given, we have listed down that the units which either are in the pre-commissioning stage or have already you know, been mechanically completed. Overall, uh, the major units which are pertaining to the refining stream, uh, our progress has been above 90%. And what we are planning is that by this calendar, calendar year end, we should be actually uh, stabilizing that. And in the last quarter of this financial year, we expect to cut the food as far as the refining uh, you know, uh, uh, domain is concerned. As far as petrochemical is concerned, that would be uh, post that, post stabilization of uh, refinery operation. So happy to share with you that major units, we have uh, done more than 90% in uh, the key units like CDU, VDU, DCU, uh, you know, uh, uh, VGO, HDT, and things like that. Uh, I already mentioned about uh, our green energy company, which I have uh, said. In terms of lubricants, there was a lot of, uh, you know, uh, discussion on that and there was anticipation on that. We had mentioned that by March uh, 24, we would be finalizing our plan. We had taken the assistance of our international consultant. I'm happy to share with you that we have since received the draft report and the requisite steps which are involved in uh, the further uh, taking, or taking forward this initiative have already been begun because that would involve uh, part A would be taking uh, approvals from the competent authorities, part two, part three would be that uh, operational excellence in various uh, you know, uh, areas. So uh, work has started on these kind of things. I am also uh, wish to highlight and share with you that our CAPEX, last year we did about 14,342 crores as CAPEX. And the point to be noted here was that this CAPEX was done totally from the internal generation. We did not borrow anything for that. As a matter of fact, we have actually repaid about 6,000 crores of our long-term loan. So if you were to look at that, 14,000 plus 6,000, which we have uh, already repaid, and that has resulted in our long-term uh, uh, debt equity ratio. Uh, now it is at healthy 1.06%. So it was in last year, long-term uh, loans were about 49,753. Uh, now in March 24, we are at 43,603. This I'm talking about our uh, long-term uh, debt because short-term, as you are aware, that in the month of March, because of uh, uh, you know the temporary requirements, we normally have to uh, you know borrow money on the short-term basis, which gets adjusted in the future month. There also, uh, last year, if we see, it was about 64,517 crores. This year, it is about 60,254 crores. So there also, uh, improvement has happened, but we actually look at our long-term uh, debt equity ratio, which is now in the range of 43,603 after repaying uh, about 6,000 crores. So uh, these are the points. Now, as far as uh, refining performance, there was some concern that, you know, uh, uh, in Q4, what was, uh, you know, the issues with our GRMs and things like that. If you would uh, recall that in Q3, we had mentioned that there are certain temporary phenomena which has happened. And in Q4, we have actually, uh, you know, had an increase of about 437%. Similarly, in Q4, if we look at the uh, GRMs, we have to compare that with Singapore GRMs. 
another factor is the product cracks the third factor is the opportunity to while as i had mentioned there that supply there is a stability on the opportunity through but in terms of commercial in terms of discount generally the discounts have been uh, you know uh, coming down so that is impacting uh, that had impacted and another temporary factor was generation of isd uh, the stock in our refinery which we have been able to liquidate and the result of that would be seen in the first quarter of uh, this financial year we would be able to stabilize on that also uh, the central theme is that we have concentrated on improving our fundamentals by enhancing the quality of our assets and second we have made ambitious plans to add new revenue streams on which we have made significant uh, uh, progress we have given all these details in the uh, press release which has been circulated so i am not going uh, i am not getting into further numbers i would most welcome any kind of uh, you know uh, questions clarifications feedbacks and uh, in the process both uh, my directors also would add in and give you the uh, the responses to whatever queries you may have uh, that is what as an introduction i have to mention thank you very much once again thank you very much sir we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask questions may press star and one on the touch tone phone if you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue you may press star and two participants are requested to use only handsets while asking a question ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles The first question is from the line of Probil Sain from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you for the opportunity and thanks for the briefing given earlier. Uh, just going to harp on the refining front again in terms of this quarter performance. You did mention that the opportunity crude, which I believe I think uh, you're referring to the Russian uh, crude component, while the, you, uh, uh, you know the volume may not have reduced, but the discount has come down. Is it fair to say that that was the major reason, sir, for the uh, QOQ decline, at least that we see? Because if I look at Singapore benchmarks, the Singapore benchmark actually went up, and you know I appreciate that the product slate is slightly different between Singapore and our uh, slate, but broadly speaking, the benchmark still went up. So can we attribute the decline QOQ to primarily the crude cost differential in this quarter? Uh. See, if you look at the Singapore GRM, Singapore GRM in the last uh, quarter of uh, last year were around uh, eight dollars a barrel, whereas in the current year the this is seven dollars a barrel. So mm -hmm. it, it has actually come down only. But yes, you are right that uh, only the Singapore GRMs are is not the only factor. But the Russian crude discount also is a significant element into the reason as to why the GRMs are lower. And the third part, uh, what our chairman has also covered uh, in his address, is regarding the ISD buildup. Uh, we had an ISD that is the intermediate stocks. Uh, now, what happens is the intermediate stocks are valued at cost plus the uh, weighted average uh, uh, operating costs. 50% of the weighted average operating cost, whereas mm -hmm. once the, we turn it into the final product, it gets valued at the uh, RTP, that is the refinery transfer prices. So the, while right. the built up was there, uh, we could not get the value in our books in, uh, during the period end, but the same has been converted into products in the current financial year, so that will get reflected in the uh, current quarter. Okay. Uh, the second question was with respect to the uh, specific plans and just the phase out in terms of uh, you mentioned that there was commissioning of some units or some part of the Vizag refinery expansion while the bottom upgradation facility will happen in this financial year. Uh, can you just explain in terms of when the total expanded capacity will be available at Vizag? 
Yeah, but, uh, not uh, actually Vaisak Refinery had mentioned that all the units have been commissioned except the bottom upgradation. Bottom upgradation right now we are in the process of mechanical com uh, you know commissioning and we expect that in the third quarter of this financial year we should be able to derive all the benefit out of that. The expansion would have, right now we have we are 13.7 uh, MMT at YZ, mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. rough commissioning it will become 15. So as I said in my introduction that after commissioning of bottom upgradation units, mm -hmm. we will have twin advantages. One would be in terms of margins and second would be in terms of enhanced capacity of about 1.3 uh, metric million tonne. And we expect this to stabilize by the third quarter of, uh, uh, you know, this uh, financial year. Understood. So last question, if I may, uh, any guidance in the segment by, uh, you know, division of KPEX by 25 and 26, if you can? Yeah, the current year, we, we are planning a KPEX are around 18,000 crores. So can you break it up into how much into refining, how much into CGD, the rabbit family finding the equity share and so on. Pardon it. I, I'll just hang on. We'll give you that. Okay. Sure. Okay. In refining, it will be around uh, 5,000 crores. Okay. Marketing would be around 6,500 odd crores. Okay. Corporate level, it will be around 800 crores. Plus, uh, 5,600 crores is uh, the equity contributions which will be making to various uh, JVs and coming to the screen. Equity contribution will be 5,600 crores. Yeah, yeah. This includes the equity contribution for our uh, new uh, wholly owned subsidiary uh, for green initiatives. As well as for Rajasthan, right? Yes, yes. Okay. All right, so thank, thank you so much. I'll come back if I am interested. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll take the next question from the line of Sabri Hazarika from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. So, uh, just one question. So, so given that I think uh, for the next like five, six months also, uh, there could be some sort of stabilization which should still be going on because I think in Vizag, I think the bottom upgrade uh, hookup will also probably like have some impact on the existing operation. Uh, so do you see that the GRM underperformance versus say your peers could continue for a couple of quarters or uh, because of this uh, intermediate product adjustment, uh, do you think that there could be a sharp recovery? Uh, as you rightly said, there would be a recovery, number one. Second is, for Vizek, our major units are already stabilized. So we don't expect that upset on those major units, that is our, you know, CBU4 and the associated unit that, you know, uh, SCHCU, all these are stabilized. And when we do the uh, hookup with uh, bottom upgradation, we are not expecting any upset. In fact, uh, you know, one of the indicators which I had mentioned that our fuel and loss performance has been better. That is because Vizek Refinery, the CBU4 which is there, it is uh, the you know, top quartile in terms of uh, energy, the utilization and things like that. And uh, I would just uh, request our director refinery also to add a few lines on this, uh, Mr. Bhattan. So under the Vizag refinery, whatever units we have uh, commissioned has the best uh, energy efficiency measures built in. So all that are already in place and reaping the benefits. And with respect to capacities of the units, what we have started, all are running at the maximum capacities and stable. As uh, our chairman told, the bottom upgradation project will get commissioned in the third quarter. And then we will get the benefits of the higher bottoms uh, upgradation also. 
Okay, got it. So just just uh, this bottom up gradation, you gave some guidance of like around two to three dollars of like GRM addition from that on absolute terms. So does it uh, that holds or has there been any change on that? Yeah, yeah, we take holds. I'll only just answer the question which was earlier asked: is, uh, How will the GRMs compare with respect to the peers? So till the time the uh, bottom up gradation is not commissioned. Uh, to to the extent of uh, the impact due to non upgradation of the bottom that vrm uh, would be lower but once the ruf or the repeat upgradation residue upgradation unit is installed then it would be at par if not better than the other uh, peers right and your five year plan is from fy 22 to 27 right or was it 23 to 28 no, the current T25 uh, plan is uh, going, and we are uh, we have already crossed the third year. Third year that is up to SY2526, and next uh, you know plan uh, that is for 31. We will call it target 31. That is already in place, and now we will be you know laying down steps for executing that. Right, I got it. Got it. Thank you so much, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take the next question from the line of Somaya V from Evendus Park. Please go ahead. Hello, thanks for the opportunity, sir. So first question is on the current quarter GRM. Uh, what would be the inventory impact here uh, on the refining and the marketing side? And also, if you could quantify anything on the intermediate stock impact on the GRM in the current quarter. Sure. Yeah. See, as regards the uh, inventory, during this quarter, uh, it's, all, all, um, it's a gain of our on, almost around 350 crores. And uh, on the marketing front, uh, it is around a loss of 600 crores. And ISD impact is uh, around 1.5 dollars a barrel. And this $1.5 a barrel impact, so what's the total impact of intermediate stocks so far, or have we have had something for the entire FY24 apart from last quarter? No, I'm talking about the uh, accumulation part, the incremental accumulation. Got it, sir. So, uh, second question is on your CAPEX plan. So, this year you did mention 18,000 crores. So, how do you see next uh, two to three years? Is it a similar run rate? And uh, what would be the projects that we'll be focusing on? Yeah, yeah. The, the CAPEX would be uh, in this range only between 15 to 18,000 uh, crores. Uh, as regards the, the areas where we would be focusing, apart from our uh, refinery and marketing units would be the green energy initiatives. Uh, which, uh, we, we, we have plans to build up a portfolio of green energies both in solar, then wind, hybrid, plus biofuel plants and uh, various other uh, opportunities which are coming in terms of CBG plants and all. So, a lot of uh, projects we have lined up and uh, the same would be done. And I may, if I may just add, in terms of our refinery, uh, we had mentioned that we have done both capacity expansion and the quality improvement. Now, in next five years, in the next five years, you know, bucket, we also have plans to uh, have LOBS in our uh, Mumbai refinery. That would be enhancing our, uh, you know, uh, play in the uh, leads domain. And uh, we would be, you know, making group three uh, lubricants and all that. So uh, that is also a portion of uh, our specific plan that is in our Mumbai refinery. Similarly, in marketing, we would be, uh, you know, uh, expanding our uh, retail network, which is about uh, 22,000 plus now in terms of retail outlets. Similarly, in new LPG plants and uh, uh, pipeline projects are there. Uh, that is what is the capex plans for next five years and and uh, we, we don't intend to add on to the uh, loan and uh, we are funding most of the projects out of internal generation got it sir one last question on uh, i mean hcml performance for the quarter uh, and also the debt level for the during the entire year or you want only the quarter in the, qu in, in the quarter uh, HMEL had a loss, uh, and that loss was primarily because of uh, they, they had 
you are aware that during the current year they had commissioned the uh, setcam uh, facility and uh, that facility now uh, from january onwards has started operating at around 95 to 100% uh, capacity now uh, because of the very subdued uh, polymer margins and all uh, they had they had a uh, loss uh, and uh, that that primarily is the reason uh, why the last quarter performance of hnel was uh, not up to the mark but uh, yes in the month of april uh, the polymer margins have started looking up and uh, at least it's not negative uh, in the month of april and uh, if you see for the entire year uh, they have made almost uh, 1800 to 1900 crores during the year and debt numbers at the end of pardon yeah the debt debt is, uh, debt, debt. Debt is around 34000 thank you Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bhavik Shah from MK Ventures. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello, sir. Uh, so, my first question is regarding the Barney refinery. So, what kind of ROCs are we expecting to generate at that plant? And when can we see it getting commissioned? And just repeat your question, please. Uh, so, what kind of ROCE do we expect to generate from the Barney refinery plant? And by when can we see it getting commission? Uh, see, in the chairman in his address has stated that as regards the refinery part is concerned, that would we will be we are targeting to commission by end of this calendar year. And uh, that, that is the that is After that, after that, the second unit would get uh, commissioned. And as regards the return is concerned, that this this project has been envisaged to an IRR return of more than twenty percent. Then? More than 12%. Okay, more than 12%. Right, sir. Actually, regarding your lubricant business. On the, on the <laughs> revised cost, sir. A post revised cost, sorry. Sorry, sorry, go on, sir. More than 12% IRR on the post revised cost. Okay, sir. Yeah, and so on the lubricant business, sir, can you give us some insights like what is our current capacity, what kind of volumes do we do there, what kind of margins do we make here? Hey, we sell almost around uh, 600 to 650 PMT of uh, this product. And uh, as regards the margins are concerned, we have fairly good margins. Uh, I cannot be dictating more than that because this is a very competitive product. Uh, okay, sir. So do what kind of like utilization levels do we run there? Your capacity utilization levels? Yeah, utilization. See, primarily they, they evacuate fully our loop refinery uh, base oil. So that is one part uh, which 100% of the production which is in our loop refinery is scattered by taken care of by by these uh, the lubricant business. In addition to that, uh, we, we have some blending plants and uh, most of the blending plants, the major blending plants, uh, operate at uh, more than 90% capacity. So we are planning any capex on this part because we didn't see any breakup of capex here. So we are not doing any capex here. Yeah? yeah, we have a plan to set up a new uh, manufacturing plant in that that is there. Okay, and sir, what will be the like, uh, capacity which you are planning to add? No, we are currently producing close to 450,000 tons in our Mumbai refinery. It will be increased to almost 800,000 tons, which will focusing on uh, Group 3 and Group 2 plus. So the quality also will be improved and quantity also will be close to double. If this is in for the next one or two years, you can see it come getting commission? Maybe in the next three years. Okay, next three years. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sumit R from AUS Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Very good afternoon to you. Uh, sir, firstly, many congratulations on achieving a fantastic performance, uh, you know, for the full year. Uh, sir, now, you know, I just had a few questions, uh, you know, if you can uh, just help understand. Uh, you know, your press release says that, uh, you know, there are certain draft recommendations, including value creation initiatives uh, and further requisite steps, which, uh, you know, you have initiated on the lubricant part. So, sir, can you please, uh, you know, talk a little bit about, uh, you know, uh, the lubricant uh, business uh, today? What is our market share? 
uh, you know, secondly, sir, you know, uh, what are the uh, value creation steps, what we are taking, and also, you know, a little bit on the timelines, uh, you know, of uh, when do you actually think all these things uh, should, uh, you know, be in place? Yeah, thanks, uh, Sumit. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, as I mentioned, that there are three facets of this uh, uh, new uh, uh, play which we have said. One is enhancing our operational efficiency right away. Second would be unbundling of our assets which are there. And third would be the requisite processes which are required for taking approval from various uh, uh, competent authorities. On all these three fronts, we have as uh, we have initiated the steps on all these three fronts, and in fact, we are expecting that in a, you know, a reasonably defined time, we should be first able to leverage on whatever improvement in the market share, improvement in the you know, operational excellence is required. That would happen, you know, forthwith immediately. Second, parallelly, which we have said is that is about uh, you know statutory approvals and all that. That process. And third, third is, you know, unbundling of our assets, which you understand that uh, we have lubricant refinery at Mumbai, and, uh, you know, we are further expanding that refinery. After that, we have, uh, you know, lubricant plants across the country which do the filling, manufacturing in Greece and things like that. So, uh, uh, that, is, that is happening. So, all this process, I would say, is on fast track. Uh, I'm afraid I'm not able to, you know, I won't be able to give you the exact uh, you know, uh, month or date or uh, right now because these processes uh, are going on and on a fast track basis. As far as, uh, you know, our market share is concerned, uh, Rajneesh, I would expect you to uh, give that response. See, among the, all the three OMCs, we are the market leader. Uh, we have almost 36 to 37 percent of the market share. Okay, that's helpful. Okay, sir, and I'm sorry, there's just one more question if I may ask, is that, uh, you know, on the uh, marketing inventory side, I mean, uh, did I pick up correctly that we suffer about a 600 crore inventory loss uh, for this quarter? Is that correct? Yes, yes, you are right. That is correct, right? Okay, and, and in the marketing okay, and, I'm sorry? That, that is in the marketing front. In the yes, marketing we front. had a gain of 450. Okay, okay. Thank you so much, sir, and wish you all the best for a wonderful future, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Murarga from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. So, uh, on HNEL, could you please share to, uh, what was the GRM that was done in FI24 and also could you share the financials for 24? Sure, Amit. Yeah. The. The uh, GRM during the last year was around 17 to 18 dollars a day. Okay, and the, what is the EBITDA and uh, PAT loss? The PAT is around uh, 18 to 1900 crore. And uh, EBITDA is around, uh, seven, around 7500 crore. Right, uh, but uh, how much of this loss was for Petkem? Like, I believe refining would have made a positive PAT. I don't have those uh, details readily available. I will share it separately. Okay, sure. And also, could you provide an update on the Shara terminal? Uh, what was the volume handled in FI24? Uh, see, the Shara terminal was to be commissioned. In fact, uh, in the month of April, we had got the commissioning cargo also. And uh, the, the vessel had arrived, but however, due to certain challenges because of the rough sea and all, we couldn't uh, uh, unload the cargo and uh, the, we couldn't uh, commission the uh, terminal. That we'll be doing it in the next phase, fair weather season, uh, beginning October onwards. So, so as regards the Chara is concerned, we are not selling any gas uh, out of Chara right now. And uh, the same would happen uh, in the current uh, financial year after October. Okay, uh, but could you just elaborate a bit more on that? What what was the issue, and like how have you resolved the issue now? 
the there was a the, there was a swell in the sea uh, on account of which uh, we, we couldn't uh, defend the, uh, the we could not connect the hoses and uh, the product could not be defended and uh, the the vessel we, in the meantime we have found an alternate uh, buyer and we have disposed of this vessel, uh, the entire cargo to a other party uh, it, it's uh, suffice to say that this was not because of any mechanical or infrastructure issue at our chara because the, all those facilities are completed this was primarily due to the weather and since this was a commissioning cargo of all the necessary actions were taken before that but uh, as our director of finance has mentioned because of the rough uh, sea and the swell beyond the permitted uh, permitted limit we were, were not able to uh, unload the cargo okay understood anush and could you also like highlight what is the vgas tariff uh, planned at chara it is as good as uh, what is there is the age okay sure thank you thank you the next question is from the line of kirtan mehta from bob capital markets please go ahead thank you for the opportunity <coughs> in terms of b would it would you be able to sort of separate out the grm for yz to indicate what was the q3 grm and how did it improve during q3 Normally we don't uh, give we we calculate it on. HPCL Thank you. Exam. We'll take the next question from the line of S Ramesh from Nirmagan Equities. Please go ahead. Yes. Now, uh, good morning and thank you very much and congratulations on a good result and your opening remarks. So, if you look at the branch accounts presented in your notes, Bizag has talked you know accounted for about three twenty nine crore. That's about eight percent of your overall profits. So, once your um, Rough unit is ready, and you get the benefit of the bottom observation. Um, roughly, you know, what is the kind of profit number you can expect from branch account? Because anyway, you disclose it. So, will it increase in, in terms of the overall share of your profit, say to fourteen uh, percent? But right now, I'm just talking about whatever you disclose in the fourth quarter. How would that move? Yeah, Ramesh, as I uh, mentioned uh, in my introductory, uh, uh, you know, address also that post rough commissioning. on both counts in terms of margins as well as in terms of our additional capacity about uh, of about 1.3 million tons uh, there would definitely be be uh, uh, you know uh, positive uh, improvement and as uh, director finance has earlier mentioned that we are expecting about uh, 2 to 2 uh, between 2 to 3 dollars uh, improvement on the total grm not only on additional but on the total grms Uh, and uh, so this would roughly be in the range of let's say uh, 10 to 15 percent of the overall profits. Yeah. So, so in terms of the operating cost, will it remain same? Uh, because how much of that incremental delta and GRM will you retain at the EBITDA level? Let me ask. See, uh, as far as operating cost is concerned, now what happens is, as I mentioned, we have already commissioned our uh, GRMP units. That is, you know, our CBU, uh, FCHCU, and all those things. So there, except maybe the you know the OPEX which is connected with the uh, product and which is connected with additional, it uh, there is no a, a increase on account of raw because that is already factored in. There will not be much uh, impact on that. Okay, that's helpful. So next uh, two questions on Chara Terminal and the CGD business. So, is there any operating loss in Chara which you have booked, uh, and uh, how much of the Chara investment have you already capitalized, or still in work in progress? And when do you expect to, you know, uh, have the commercial impact of Chara in your P&L? Uh, Ramesh, as we mentioned, we have not yet, uh, you know, we could not unload that uh, the cargo, the commissioning cargo which had come. So, therefore, you know, this uh, issue of what has been uh, the operating loss will not be, you know, that. Uh, Materially relevant, and what we, as uh, we have mentioned, that since the facilities are ready, and we are expecting in the next fair weather season, that is post this monsoon, sometime in September and in October, we would be able to take the commissioning uh, cargo, and thereafter 
the thing would be commissioned because the pipeline connection is already there uh, from uh, evacuation from Chara to the uh, gas grid. That pipeline is, has been completed. As far as our internal mechanical facilities are there, they have been commissioned. And as far as the port facilities are concerned, we have uh, got the ship to shore compatibility study done and that is also completed. Okay. So, so in terms of the commercial, um, you know, op operation, has it started now in terms of the commercialization of the asset or will you start it only in October? Because there will be a depreciation impact in the first half. That's why I'm asking that. Yeah, yeah. We will we, we'll be uh, commissioning it or uh, only after we get the cargo inside. Okay. Now on this CGD business, can you uh, let us know how much is the CapEx done so far in your standard CGD? What is the CapEx you expect in the next two, three years? And uh, what is the kind of volume you're doing now and how much would that, uh, you know, increase over the next two, three years in the standalone uh, CGDs, not counting whatever you're distributing in your, you know, HPCL retail outlets on the standalone CGDs, please. On a standalone basis, uh, we are doing yearly around uh, 1,200 to 1,500 crores of investment uh, in the thing. And this will gradually increase uh, as we, we get into new GAs and all. Yeah. Right now, on an overall basis, uh, we, we if, if you see the total natural gas, uh, we, we are already doing, uh, I think, around 0.4 million metric ton of uh, sales. So how many CNG stations do you have in your new C, uh, CGD outlets, your new CGD outlets? Total CNG stations you are talking about uh, in our GAs or total? Uh, your GAs, sir. In our GAs. Yeah. How much? Our view. No, no, we want our view. The total uh, CNG station is around 1690, and if you have to see only our GAs, then it is around 328. 328. And the last word, uh, when do you think you will start generating uh, EBITDA from the GAs, and uh, when do you expect that to be? you know, visible in your penal by 26, 27, can you give us some indication? Even right now, we, we have been selling like these all 328 uh, stations, CNG stations and all, they are selling the product. So we are already getting the uh, revenues, but yes, uh, once the initial eight year period is over, whereby uh, we will be commissioning more such uh, units and all. Yeah, even the current year, the EBITDA contribution is positive uh, from the GAs which we have. But uh, once the project phase is over, uh, it will significantly increase. Okay, sir, thank you very much and wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shubham Shukla from Voyager Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I hope I'm audible. Yes, yes, Shubham, please go ahead. Uh, so, sir, I just wanted to ask you questions about your imports. How much is like Russian oil in total we have imported this year? We have imported about uh, 30 to 40 percent uh, out of our total imports. And uh, are they like spot price based or like contract based? So all these are spot based. We have no uh, down contract on uh, Russian crude. Okay. And do we have any uh, like spread in discounts uh, available to us, like compared to the benchmark? Uh, <laughs> you know, this is, I think, uh, you know, uh, would be difficult to quantify because even the benchmark is hypothetical. Mm. And uh, what is coming in because uh, all uh, I could say is that we are taking this on DAT basis delivered as port in my facility. Now that, uh, if you take that, you have to also factor in the freight and things like that, freight insurance associated. So my uh, you know, discounts are finalized on DAT basis. So therefore, there is no actually a common denominator to compare the various, uh, you know, uh, discount levels which are available. Second, this is also a sensitive, uh, uh, commercially sensitive information. I can only say that uh, 
before buying any crude, whether it is a Russian crude or any crude, we go through a process. Uh, we economically analyze what is the value which it creates in the system. So, the crude which gives gives us the maximum benefit in our system, considering our configuration, the binary configuration and all, that is only bought. Uh, so, at whatever price we get it, only when it makes some positive impact in our, in our books, we, we buy that. Okay. And just one more question on your LNG terminal, uh, Chara, uh, if I'm pronouncing it right. Uh, you are looking to sell some stakes or like the whole like if I get that right? As of now, we are, we are more focused on uh, commissioning the, the terminal uh, and uh, booking capacity in the same. Uh, if I, if, as and when if uh, any such opportunity comes or there are people who are interested, we will review. As of now, we haven't. Uh, we're not okay, looking for some clarity. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mayank Maheshwari from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Um, hi, sir. Thank you for doing the call. Uh, my first question was a bit around your press release, which you talked about generative AI and how you want to use these tools in terms of the performance. So can you just give us a bit of an idea around what are you trying to do there? Yeah, Mike. Uh, see, uh, in this, uh, you know, uh, digital and uh, AI ML, these are two you know, uh, separate things because uh, digital, while we have mentioned that we have done uh, the latest ERP implementation and things like that, as far as AI and ML is concerned, we are doing video analytics as far as our uh, uh, retail outlets are concerned to study the consumer behavior, to have a closer connect, that is we are doing video analytics there. In our pipelines, we are doing, uh, you know, using AI for basically the pipeline security, the pipeline integrity system. Third, in our refineries, uh, creating digital twins of the refinery assets which we are uh, doing. And apart from that, uh, in, in our R&D center also, we are uh, focusing and we are trying to work out on a separate, uh, you know, a digital lab in, in uh, our uh, finance department, we are using uh, AI. We are also using in, uh, in terms of demand forecast. And that has been a success story as far as demand forecast where we have used AI. We have come pretty close to uh, you know, uh, whatever is the actual uh, sales versus what demand forecasting which we have done. Uh, we are also doing uh, you know, uh, what, what is called uh, robotic processing workers or you know, electronic workers in our uh, uh, activities with a transactional nature. So we have uh, implemented this in our uh, finance department. Uh, apart from this, uh, also there are some tie-ups with the startups in this facet in, in, in terms of video analytics, in terms of uh, uh, you know, pipeline security system, in terms of refining. So these are the broad baskets, these are the broad areas uh, where we are working, Mike. Thank you, sir. So the participant has left the queue. We will move on to the next question, which is from the line of Yogesh Patel from Dolat Capital. Please go ahead. Thanks for taking my question, sir. My question is related to crude sourcing detail. From third quarter effort, 24, we started providing a detailed crude sourcing, like how much you are buying from ONGC, how much is the long-term contract, and the spot purchases. And it's possible when you're in crude share in overall. And going forward, do we expect that share of core crude or Russian crude will increase? If you could share some details on that side. Thanks. Uh, I'm not sure what uh, you know what uh, breakup you are referring, but as far as uh, Venezuelan uh, Venezuelan crude is concerned, we are not uh, uh, because that is not suitable for our refineries. So uh, we are not buying, and we don't intend to buy that. As far as uh, Russian crude is concerned, as uh, our director of refineries mentioned some time ago that uh, about 30 to 40 percent of the imported crude is uh, this Russian crude. But the basic parameter is that for any crude which is available, whether it's on uh, spot or uh, you know uh, on term basis, 
we do the uh, GPW and uh, the next uh, realization, cargo realization of the crude and do that analysis. Uh, that is what I can say with you. Sir, in last quarter, if I remember correctly, uh, you generally purchased close to 3.5 MMT kind of a, a ONGC crude, then long-term purchases are close to 40-45%. Is that, is that share has changed any, any changes in that side? Broadly, that remains the same. Broadly, because, uh, yeah, over the uh, past few years, the you know, share of spot crude has uh, got enhanced. And uh, uh, consequently, the share of the term crude comes down. Okay. And, and sir, uh, if you could share the lubricant business contribution to HPCL's EBITDA on an annual basis, that would be helpful. See, if you see in terms of volumes, uh, we, we yeah. sell around uh, 650 to 700 TMT, that is around, uh, if you, even if you take 0.7, but the total volume which we sell is around 47 million metric tons. So although it doesn't even constitute, it constitutes a very small portion of the volume, but in terms of uh, EBITDA and all, uh, it, it is, I can only say that it is significantly, it, it is multiples of the uh, percentage of volume. So amount will be closer to 1000 crore or less than that? It's around that number. Okay. So thank, thank, thank you very much, sir. And Wish you best. Thank you, Vine. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Roshni Devi from Argus Group. Please go ahead. Um, Hello. Roshni Devi. Yeah, please proceed, ma'am. Uh, hi, sir. Just uh, wanted a clarification regarding the pipeline of Chara LNG terminal. If it's yeah. complete. Yeah, yeah, Roshni, that is completed. And in fact, from uh, Chara, there is a, uh, uh, you know, a place called Gundala, that is about 42 kilometers from Chara. That pipeline has been commissioned. From Gundala onwards, it is already connected to the GSPL uh, uh, national grid. So, and the pipeline has been hydro tested and it is ready for you know, uh, uh, taking the product. Okay, okay. So one last question regarding your uh, Visat bottom upgradation unit. Which crude grades you are going to you you'll be using there? We can take any heavy crude which comes from Middle East, uh, Saudi and uh, Iraq uh, crude we can take. Okay, not Venezuela. Venezuela, we are at present we are not uh, planning because that is very low API, so and high tan. So we will not contemplate to take that. Okay, sir. And in terms of all the other refineries, which uh, are you also looking at uh, any crude from Nigeria? Yeah, we, we sold crude from West African country. So <clears throat> one, uh, uh, at least once in two months, some West African crude we keep from. Okay. Yes, include Nigeria. So, so which refinery, sir? In primarily, it comes to Vishak refinery, but even now we are processing Nigerian crude. It's not that it is not. Okay, sir. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vipul Kumar Anupjan Shah from Sumangal Investments. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, uh, I just want a clarification. You said your loop market share is 36, 37 percent. That is of the overall market or of the, the all PSUs combined? It's among OMC oil marketing. So what what should be your overall market share? It's, it's, to my knowledge, because this number is not readily available, but uh, according to me, it should be around. Uh, 22 to 26%, sorry. or uh, around 20%. Uh, here the problem is, as uh, he was expressing, that apart from uh, you know the three major OMCs, there are so many active players. I mean, if you were look, if you look at that, there there would be you know more than thousand players, 
and there are about 41, 48 uh, uh, players which are there. So getting those data, collating, com comparing on like-to-like -like basis is, uh, you know, quite hypothetical. Okay. And sir, uh, uh, in uh, response to an earlier question, you mentioned EBITDA around 1,000 crores. So is, uh, that, is that figure correct, sir? Yeah, yeah. And lastly, uh, sir, what is our cumulative investment till date in Rajasthan refinery? Investment uh, means you want our equity contribution or uh, the total? Yeah, our equity contribution, sir. Yes, I, I contributed around 14,700. And in one of your earlier presentation, if I remember correctly, you had mentioned, uh, I think, uh, uh, GRM of around twenty dollars per barrel, if I remember correctly, for Rajasthan. So, what is what is the roadmap for such high GRM for Rajasthan refinery, sir? Roadmap is to set up the refinery and start processing, <laughs> and realize the high GRM. And high GRM we had mentioned because of the petrochemical content, because of the energy efficiency, because of high complexity, high complexity because that is uh, and the uh, petroleum uh, sorry petrochemical uh, uh, conversion index would be the highest about 26 percent. 26 percent. Yeah. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will take that as a last question for today. I would now hand the conference over to Mr. Vatrajan for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, I'd like to open the floor for the management if they have any closing comments. Thank you. Thank you, Vaza. It was great uh, interacting with uh, all the all, all of you. and. Uh, I'm sure we will continue with our efforts to add value to the shareholders and also ensure that uh, all the projects which we have taken, we commission it at the earlier and uh, the, the start adding, bringing new volumes as well as efficiencies into the program. Uh, I can only say that the last year, we, we apart from the performance in terms of physical and all, uh, in in terms of uh, in terms of shareholder rewarding the shareholders, we have given a healthy uh, dividend of almost 31.5 per share. Uh, and further, we have also declared a bonus of uh, one share for every two shares, and we would continue to reward our shareholders and we would also thank them for being with us and supporting us in all of this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, members of the management. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Antique Stock Broking, that concludes this conference call. We thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you, everyone.